tutorial will demonstrate how you can create curved objects such as a set of train tracks. So first of all, let's just create the train tracks. So we've got the default cube here and we'll use the scale tool to stretch it out to some distance. And I can just hit the keyboard shortcut S and Y and stretch it out like this. Now if you want to see how big what you're making is in real world terms, you can open up this menu system on the side here. So I've just hit N or the, on the keyboard, or you can use that little arrow there. And down here it tells me that I've created a shape that's nearly 100 meters long, which is quite large. So I'm just going to even that up. And what we want is to now change the dimensions of these axes here. So let's just go back into our, we can do it here actually, or we can do it in the workspace here. So I'm going to go to this view here and I'm going to squish it down this way and squish it down that way. And you can see the dimensions of it are shrinking here as well. So just for ease sake, I might just say 0.2. So that means in real world terms, they're about 20 centimeters. Okay, so that's our big long train track. And what we'll do is now we're going to put some cuts into this object so that when we bend it along a curve, it will actually bend. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, or you can just change the mode here. And I'm going to select this loop cut tool. And this is the slowest way of doing this. And I'm just going to make a cut here and I'm just going to go through and just keep adding cuts, breaking it up into smaller and smaller pieces. So the more cuts you put into the object at this stage, the more flexible the object will be. There's also a keyboard shortcut. If you select Control R and then it will automatically put a cut in wherever your mouse is. And then you can even use your mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts that are being made. So that's another way of doing it. So we've got quite a few cuts in there and that should allow the track to curve around the track. So I'm going back to object mode now. I'm going to go to this top down view and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate that object. I'm going to press G and X, G for grab and X to move along the X axis. And I'm just going to place it there. Okay, just a short distance away from each other. Might even just move it a little bit closer like that. So now let's create the, the cross beams. So I'm going to go to add, mesh, add another cube. And we go to this side view. We can start to position it and get the right shapes. I'm going to squash that down. Squash it down this way as well. And once again, you could use the values here in the sidebar to get the right sort of shape that you're after. You can just judge it by your eye. Okay, so going down to the top view, positioning it somewhat in the middle. Use that scale tool. We want it to sort of go underneath the train tracks. So you can see I've put it down too far. underneath the train tracks like that. So when I zoom out, it's probably still a little bit too big, but it's fine for what we are demonstrating here. So I'm going to create now a whole series of these cross beams in a very easy manner. So if I move that first one that I've created all the way down to the start of those train tracks, and then I'm going to click on this modifier button here. So if I click on that, then I'm going to say add modifier, generate array. Okay, and you can see what it's done automatically without touching anything in the menu. 
is it's doubled that object and put another one there. So what we need to tell Blender is that we want many of these objects to be spread across the Y axis. So where it says here, factor X, I'm going to change that to zero. And when I start to just change the value here, you can see in the space here, it's created another one of those objects. So I'm going to just now change how many I want. So let's see how many will fit into this train track all the way to the end. And I managed to get 75 in there. It might be a different view depending on how large your cross beam was. Okay. So let's add at this point some materials to all of our objects. So that cross beam will get it a bit of a brown sort of a color. Make it look like it's timber. It'll be very rough. If you want to see the actual color being applied, change your view up here. Viewport shading. Okay, now we can see that's been changed. Let's add a bit of a dark steel color to that one. We might make this one go all the way up on the metallic value. And I don't think it'd be too shiny, so maybe just leave that as it is. Now, when you create materials, sometimes it's helpful to name them. So I'll call that one steel. And I can click on the other one. And it's actually already, for some reason, attained the value of uh, the first one. So at this point, we need to Go back to the modifier tab, and if you are happy with that number of uh, cross beams, say apply, and we're going to join everything together. So I'm going to just select everything like this and hit Control J, which has now turned this into just one object. So we can now bend that object around a curve. So I'm going into this top view mode here. I'm going to go add, curve, and path. And it's put a path in the world origin right where the cursor is. We're going to move that down to the beginning of your train track. It's around the wrong way. We want this path facing the same direction as the train track. So I'm just going to use that rotate tool there. make sure that the path is selected and I'm going to go into edit mode now and select that top vertice there and simply I'm going to start to create a bit of a bendy shape for the train track to go along. So I'm going to press E and move the cursor, E, move the cursor and you can see wherever I move it is starting to bend the actual path. E, moving, click, E, move the cursor, click, this is very bendy, probably too bendy, E, go back this way, click, okay, so you can always go back and edit that shape as well, so I'm going back to object mode now, I'm going to select the track, I'm going to say add modifier, we're going to deform, shape so I'm going to select curve and here is asking what curve do you want to use well I've only got one curve in this workspace so I select that one and now it'll just be a matter of moving the train track along that curve there okay so we can if we wanted to select that curve again and go back into edit mode we might want to change the curves shape a little bit, make it even more drastic. But you can see the more that you do cut that initial train track, the more it's able to bend. We can see some straight lines there because it's curving a little bit too much for the amount that we've cut the, the original tracks. Okay, so it's a very useful tool. If you want to then keep that, um, you can go into Back to object mode, select the train track, and you can apply that modifier. And then that train track will 
be curved as a shape by itself. It doesn't need to be attached to that curve anymore. Okay, anything that you want to undo, you can always go back to undo history. You can even undo those applier modifiers there as well. Okay, so I might just go back a couple steps, undo the applier modifier, because I want to show you one more thing. Let's say you want an object to move along these train tracks, like your train that you've made. I'm going to add another. Let's add a cube. And I'm going to arrange that cube so it's sort of near the beginning of that train track. And I can constrain that cube to the train track. So I'm going to hit Constrain. I'm going to clamp. I'm going to select the path. And now it's stuck to that path. So um, normally it just works if you just leave these as uh, whatever they're already on. And what I should be able to do now is to move one of these values and it will move the train, uh, that cube along the path. So I'm moving the X axis and it moves the X, uh, the cube along the path as well. So if you, let's say if it was your train and you wanted to move along that path, we would then maybe just have to move the path up a little bit as well so that the cube or your train is traveling along the path. It's not exactly in the middle either, so you can just fiddle around with it a little bit as well to make sure it stays on the track. Okay, you can animate that as well. So if I go, make sure you're selecting the right object. If I go back to the start here, open up the timeline. I'm going to hit I, which adds a key. If I go down along the timeline a little bit further, move the position of the cube towards the end of the track and hit I again to insert another keyframe. We can see then that we've got a very simple with the object being constrained to the curve and following the same path as the train track.